Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and another video about OSCE uh, preparation and uh, in today's video I bring to you another case that is very common in the pharmacist OSCE exam um, with uh, PEVC in Canada or for any OSCE exam um, this is a very common case uh, so hopefully um, a few of you who are preparing for the test will uh, benefit from today's video now if you're new on the channel this channel is all about clinical pharmacy practice. I teach you how to become clinical pharmacists, how to advance your career. I also teach you how to pass the pharmacist OSCE exam. And there's a whole chapter on my uh, channel about immigrating to Canada. So make sure to check all that out and make sure to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so that you get notified of my future uh, videos. Now let's get started with today's uh, presentation here and today's video. Of course, you'll find some instructions on the door um, prior to entering the station and here it says a patient will come to ask you for help choosing a product make sure to recommend a product and counsel the patient on its use and if you've been following my channel for a while you know that I keep saying that you have to read these instructions very well and take it very seriously because every little thing mentioned there need to be done so basically you need to choose a product and also counsel a patient on that on the use of that product so that being said if you chose the wrong product and counsel the patient on it you fail if you chose the right product and gave wrong information about counseling you fail if you chose a product and you don't counsel the patient you fail so that's why i say you have to read these instructions and understand them very well before entering the station and they give you a few minutes to read them they, they don't rush you into the station all right so now we know what we want to do we want to choose a product and counsel the patient once you enter the station take a seat on the desk there will be an assessor setting somewhere in the room you will see a few references on the table don't bother try reading all of them because the patient will enter right away there is no time to read but you'll also see a few medications on the table quickly look at them but don't spend much time your focus should be on the patient and your interaction with the patient the patient will come in they will ask you for help choosing a medication for congestion they will not say who is it for so make sure to ask the patient who is the medication for is it for yourself or is it for someone else it could be for a little kid and if it's for a child the recommendation will be different right so make sure to ask that question it might not make sense to you because all the medications on the table might not be for kids but still you have to say it in order to get points on on that part uh, also let's see if i have that on the next slide here uh, so let's say the medication is for an adult, so it's for the patient uh, sitting in front of you. You need to ask the usual uh, questions about the past medical history, any allergies, um, if the patient used any other medications at home for cold, uh, if they use any um, chronic medications, if they have any medical conditions that they use medications for, etc., etc. You have to ask the patient to describe the problem to you what symptoms have they been experiencing you need to understand if this is really a cold or is it something else um, the patient might say something like i've been having a runny nose with a very sore nose from blowing it i've also been sneezing frequently okay fine it seems like a a, a common cold but it could be also a flu so ask more questions uh, when did you start having these symptoms he'll he or, or she will say something like two or three days ago have you seen a doctor for this the patient will say no i i thought i would talk to you first um did you have any other symptoms like a cough or a fever or shortness of breath now you're trying to limit your options here you're trying to diagnose the patient even though you don't have to but you're trying to uh, narrow your choices the patient will say most probably no they may say they had a mild cough uh, maybe they had a fever a few days ago but it's gone now 
um, they will never say we had a shortness of breath because that's a serious situation that you cannot solve in uh, in OSCEs. Um, basically, you, you have to tell them go 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 to the emergency department. This could be serious. So the answer most probably will be no. Uh, and again, do you have any allergies to medications? Um, they will say no. Are you taking any medications at home right now? Um, in, the, in our case, yes, um, I use Timolol uh, eye drops. So what do you use these drops for immediately? If they say they are using something, ask them. You know what it is for, but you have to ask the patient. You have to get the information from the patient because earlier they said they don't have any medical conditions, but now they say they, they're using Timolol eye drops. And then the patient will say, I use it for glaucoma. Okay, so you have glaucoma, uh, that's a medical condition, but the patient might not know, might not think that glaucoma is a medical condition. It's something in the eyes, so sometimes their brain function differently, right? But now you know that they have glaucoma. Okay, do you use any other medications, uh, including over-the-counter stuff? They will say no. Now you confirmed it twice, so you'll take their word for it. Any herbal medications or supplements, they will say sometimes yes, sometimes no. In this case, they say yes, calcium and vitamin D for my bones. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So looks like there is another condition here. Do you have any medical conditions I should know of? Because they mentioned something else here. Now they might say, okay, glaucoma and I guess arthritis. Again, arthritis, to us, it's a medical condition. To the patient, it might not seem like a medical condition so it's okay to ask multiple times if the patient adds on information fine now we know the patient has glaucoma and arthritis all right thanks for the information i just need a couple of minutes to check my references here before i can recommend a product don't leave the patient and go read the references you have to tell them that you need a couple of minutes to look at the references the interaction with the patient and how professional it is, is what you get more points on. And then ask them if that's okay. They will say, yeah, sure. And now you start looking at the references. And like I keep saying, don't spend more than two minutes on your references. You'll find some references about common cold. So that confirms our uh, diagnosis. Um, common cold, what is it, uh, what are the symptoms, what are the diagnoses, how to diagnose it, and what are the treatment of choices. Um, the first one here, cough suppressants, antihistamines, decongestants, and uh, if you read quickly, antihistamines, it says there is no evidence of benefit from treatment with antihistamines. So that immediately rules out antihistamines as a treatment. Decongestants are uh, re relieve uh, uh, cold symptoms. Cough suppress suppressants are for cough. Um, echinacea, uh, antipyretics or non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, these are for fever and headache uh, in general. Um, zinc, vitamin C, they'll find more information here. But again, before you look at that, look at the um, products on your table. You'll see something like this. You'll see a benilin, uh, cough and chest congestion. You'll, you'll see Sudafed, um, head, cold, and sinus. And you'll see something like Equate, allergy relief. That's chlorpheniramine, uh, 4 milligrams antihistamine, it says on the box. So, you have three products here. All right? Um, don't spend more than 10 seconds on these products, by the way. Immediately, look, what is it? Chlorophenamine, and what, what is this? Acetaminophen and pseudoephedrine. Okay, what is this? Um, it's a cough and chest uh, relief the reliever, cough with phlegm, uh, chest congestion, minor bronchial irritation, sore throat and pain. So basically, this is a cough syrup, and the patient did not complain of any cough. So this should be your least choice here. You shouldn't choose this because the patient didn't say anything about a cough. Yeah, it might help with sore throat, which she may or may not have. Uh, she didn't say anything about a sore throat. So this should be ruled out immediately. Cancel it and look at the other two. One of them has a decongestant, pseudoephedrine, which you should know by heart. 
uh, before the station. Um, you, you shouldn't learn what pseudoephedrine is during the station. Um, and uh, a painkiller or something for fever, which is the acetaminophen. And uh, for those of you who don't know what acetaminophen is, acetaminophen is uh, the same as paracetamol. I, I know I have students that come from other countries that uh, they call um, they call it paracetamol. So paracetamol and acetaminophen are the same. And you have an anti-allergic. Now go back to your references here. Quickly read. Is this imp important? No, it's not important. Look here, uh, um, the clinical course and diagnosis, rhinorrhea, nasal uh, obstruction, throat irritation, cough and fever. So some of the symptoms uh, the patient have described. Go to treatment and uh, look, what do you have on the table and what is mentioned here? We have an antihistamine and we have a decongestant. And we have the decongestant has an antipyretic with it. Okay. So it says here decongestants relieve the cold symptoms and with antihistamines it says no evidence of their benefit. So that rules out antihistamine. So your answer should be the decongestant. That's how you should answer this station. Okay, we're going to go with this one. We're going to counsel the patient on it. Look at the references again. See what else is there about pseudofid or pseudoephedrine. And that's basically what you're going to use to counsel the patient. So you chose a product. This is the one you chose, and that's the first thing they want you to do. And now you have to counsel the patient on it, so you have to look for a reference talking about Sudafid on the table. Remember to take a maximum of two minutes on the references. I keep saying that. If you took longer, that's fine, but make sure you don't waste a lot of time because you only have seven minutes. There could be multiple references on the desk. You don't have to use all of them, by the way. Just use whichever you need. Like most of the time you'll find a CPS book on the table. You don't have to open that book. That's a very big, nasty book. It will waste at least five minutes. At least. Because it's the, the words are, are really tiny. So in order to find the information, it takes really long. But you'll find other information. I mean, if you have to, if you have to look into that book, fine. Go ahead and look into it. But if you don't have to, if you have all the information and other references, just go with everything else. Don't spend too much time checking them out. Uh, the amount of information available can attract you to read more in order to give more information to the patient. However, if you don't pay attention to the time, you won't be able to tell the patient all the information you want to, and then you won't pass the station. That's the problem. Uh, so always create a balance between checking the references and talking to the patient. Decide which product is more suitable for the patient based on their past medical history and their medication history. In this case, it seemed that Sudafid is the best option. Chlorpheniramine is contraindicated with glaucoma. We don't know what kind of glaucoma the patient has. So unless we know it's contraindicated and also from the reference you read on the table, it said that antihistamines don't have any proven uh, benefit. So that rules it out. And then Benelin is a cough syrup. Uh, the patient doesn't have any cough. So that immediately takes Benelin away. Now, once you chose the product, you have to counsel the patient on it and that would need probably a minute or a minute and a half max. Uh, look at the Sudafed drug information in front of you. There will definitely be drug information um, sheets about Sudafed, about Benelin, and also about chlorpheniramine. Um, provide the information about only the product you chose. Don't talk about the other two. Don't mention anything about the other two products to the patient. They don't want to hear about them. Plus, if you mention any information about the other two, it can actually confuse the patient and you might end up losing points. Uh, make sure to mention any possible adverse effects, of course, and how should the patient deal with them, especially the serious ones that require an ER visit. Once done with all the information, ask the patient if they understood the instructions. Again, you don't have to ask them to repeat everything you say. Just ask them if they understood and if they have any questions. Uh, always, always offer a follow-up call. Don't forget the follow-up. This is very important uh, to check uh, on the patient's symptoms, if they got better or worse. 
and ask the patient to see a doctor uh, 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 if the symptoms get worse in two days because you want to cover um, yourself and uh, you also want to um, want the patient to be in the best uh, place if they don't get better uh, if that medication makes things worse they have to see a doctor because maybe that medication is not good for them and uh, always say that you're going to document this counseling session on the patient profile so that you get points for the documentation part that's it for today's case i hope that this is helpful for some of you who are preparing for the test don't forget to check the description part um, check out the uh, oski and um, the BABC preparation course uh, offered by pharma e pass um, if you use the code in the description you get $200 discount on whichever course you need it's very helpful uh, take a look at uh, their website they have a really good course and uh, make sure again to subscribe to the channel so that you don't get, miss any of the future videos thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video